There's a ton of super innovative technology packed into a Joy-Con. Not so much this one, I, I broke this one. I think it's safe to say that they're over-engineered to all hell. When was the last game where you actually felt HD rumble? Most of the reason that they look the way they do is because they need to be separated in order to play with two players. The design choices that led to this symmetry also took away from the Switch's ergonomics and portable mode. Sure, it feels fine to play like this, but it could definitely feel better. And this is why people have been so interested in these big fat Joy-Cons recently. They do make playing in portable mode way more comfortable, but there are a lot of options out there and they all offer a slightly different experience. So I took this opportunity to try to find the best one to weed through all of the Amazon crap, if you will. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. I know, just pretend like it's a coffee shop. If you want to give yourself some peace of mind while you're working on public Wi-Fi, you might as well throw on ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN will give you that extra layer of encryption. Even when you're working at home, there's nothing stopping your ISP from seeing all of your activity, even when you're in incognito mode. It's also useful for unlocking blocked content. Look at how much the Netflix selection changes when I switch it to UK. We don't have your name here in the States. Find out how you can get three months free using the link in the description below or go to expressvpn.com slash wolfden, W-U-L-F-F-D-E-N. And thank you, ExpressVPN, for helping support this channel. Oh. Oh, I'm a garbage person. I got a whole bunch here. I got ones that only work in portable mode. I got ones that you can detach and use as actual Joy-Cons. I got ones that you slot the switch into. These are probably the most extra. I got a lot of these off of Amazon. If you haven't seen my knockoff Joy-Con video, you should check that out. But a lot of the same principles apply here. There's a lot of AliExpress crap that just gets a new name slapped on the box and then resold on Amazon. In fact, I almost got duped into buying two of the same product because of that. So essentially, there's knockoffs and then there's knockoffs of those knockoffs. But there's only one that is officially licensed by Nintendo and we'll start with those. That's the Hori Split Pad Pro. We've talked about the Split Pad Pro a little bit over a year ago, and back then there was only one design available, and it was made specifically to be played with the game Damon X Machina. Remember that game? Mech people really tried to love that game. But now they have all sorts of cool designs. I'm particularly a fan of these Pikachu ones. The design has a sort of satin sheen to it. People love the Split Pad because of how good it feels on the Switch. It kind of makes it feel like you're holding a Switch Pro. It's bigger and meatier and manlier, but it's very plasticky. The split pad is one of those that only works while attached to the Switch. You cannot detach them to use as wireless Joy-Con. There's no motion controls or rumble. They're really light and kind of just feel like hollow shells, honestly. But it does sport a turbo button, which we love to see and assignable back buttons. The switch with the split pad on can also sit perfectly in a dock, so you never have to take them off. They also have this weird plastic bit protruding off the back for some reason. For an officially licensed budget option, these are pretty great, but they're not really a budget option. These Pikachu ones were $60. You can get just the plain black ones for only $40, which is a lot better. 
But for just $10 more than that, you can get these puppies. These bad boys. These honch, hon honking mamas. This is the Binbok Joy-Con. They're almost exactly the same as the split pad in every single way. The buttons feel the same, and it even has the same reassignable back buttons and turbo that activates in the same exact way that it does on the split pad. They're almost the same form factor, just with a slightly smaller width. The difference is that it has a really cool RGB light around the Joy-Con. Wow, oh, so nice, oh, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you can use them wirelessly and it has rumble and motion controls. It comes with this thing so that you can use them as a Joy-Con grip, but that'll probably get lost. So not only would this be a good option for you to use in portable mode, but it could also be used as an additional controller if you're playing docked with friends. I actually like the thumbsticks on here more than the split pad. It's also weightier because there's more stuff going on on the inside. And because of that, this non-licensed controller actually feels more premium than the Hori. The only thing I don't like is the D-pad. When I'm kind of rolling my thumb around it, it feels like I'm jostling something around in there. It's not great. This one also passes the dock test. The RGB lights will eventually turn off after a while. I'm not sure how long, but it seems like a couple of minutes. Actually, I don't know how long it takes for these to turn off. They sometimes turn off within a few minutes. They sometimes stay on for an absurdly long time. The lights are slightly customizable. You can hold the turbo button and click the stick in to change the color. Unfortunately, the rainbow effect doesn't move, so I'm sorry to say it can't give you the true RGB gamer effect. Oh wait, I found, oh wait. Oh, I found a mode that cycles through it. It's, it's, wait, now I can't, how did you do it? It's very slow, the cycle, so it's not like that cool. These controllers actually feel pretty good in wireless mode too. The motion controls work well. They're not gonna be as accurate as Nintendo's own motion technology, but I wouldn't expect them to be. It's passable. I could probably play through Mario Galaxy with these and not have an issue. They have USB-C ports on the bottom, which scared me because I thought they might be used for charging, but they're just for firmware updates. The controllers charge just fine on the Switch. However, this wasn't the case for Kevin Kenson. One of his refused to charge on his Switch for some reason. And Spawnwave had a weird sticker under his D-pad, causing that to feel weird. Which brings me to my next point. These are pretty cheaply made. A lot of these non-official controllers don't have the same sort of quality assurance that Nintendo has. So there's gonna be a lot of manufacturing defects. I happen to get a good one, but you might not. Most of the time they'll replace it without an issue. If not the company, then Amazon themselves would. You just might go through a couple of returns till you get yourself a good one. Next, we've got the literal knockoff of the split pad. We have the Kaidlan programmable controller for Switch Joy-Con, Joypad replacement for Joy-Con, Switch remote for Joy-Con with rear programmable function turbo for Switch controller. But these have two programmable buttons on the back. This is a good example of that wave of AliExpress to Amazon drop shipping products. These are $35, which is almost half the price of the split pads own MSRP, which I'm sure was the biggest selling point at one time. But for just $5 more, you can get the generic black split pad. Maybe if you really want that extra programmable button, this might be worth it. I also kind of really like the D-pad, but I wouldn't be getting these just for the D-pad. Hori has the D-pad Joy-Con for that, which is significantly cheaper. Also, the back is like very obviously 3D printed. These are decent, but you'd probably want to stick to the officially licensed hardware for a slightly less cheap feeling experience, unless this clicky D-pad is really selling it for you. We also have these big fat grips that you slot the switch into. These are probably the least practical. They're bulky for almost no reason and they don't pass the dot test. Oh. Oh, I just feel like there's a better way to do this. You don't need this back piece at all. It's just a waste of space. That being said, this dope one is pretty decent. 
The felt on the back makes it feel pretty premium. The switch slides in nicely. It has a little pass through for charging, even if the bottom part is a little bulky. Maybe it's designed so the whole unit will stand up, but it only kind of does. Honestly, the buttons feel great on here, and this might have the best D-pad out of everything that I tried today. It's nice, thick, raised, and clicky. It also comes with three different right stick attachments, small, medium, and large. I guess the biggest benefit to something like this is that your switch is kind of protected. If you drop it onto a flat surface, it can only really be damaged from the top. This is beautiful. But I feel like if that's your concern, you'd probably want to go with something like a Nerf case, something whose sole purpose is just to protect your switch. And don't worry, I've saved the worst for last. We've got these Kinvoca ones. They, it's just word soup at this point. These are very similar to the Dobe ones. They even have the same exact thumbsticks and a very similar D-pad. But they're worse in a lot of ways. For example, it doesn't come with the thumbstick attachments that the Dobe one comes with. It only comes with the shitty small one. The D-pad is good, but it isn't as clicky as the Dobe one. Also, the grip is very tight on the Switch. Are you kidding? So tight that I was a little nervous jamming it in there. Are you kidding me? The plastic is overall a lot cheaper feeling, and the switch sticks out of the top, so it doesn't even protect the switch very well. Worst of all, it's ugly as sin. It also holds your switch hostage, so once you use it, you can never have it back. All right. The Kinvoca grip is $36. For $4 more, you can get the superior Dobe grips, which are $40. But for the same price, you could just get the Hori split pad, which is more compact and has a turbo button and assignable back buttons. But for $10 more than that, you can just get the Binbok controllers, which are also wireless and have motion controls. The only thing here is that there might be some manufacturing defects. Even though I'm staring at the QC Pass sticker on the back. Maybe Kevin Kenson's didn't QC Pass. <laughs> Basically, out of everything that I tried today, I still think that the Hori Split Pad provides a great value. If you've got an extra 10 bucks, the RGB Binbok Joy-Con are a better value, but only if you happen to get a good one like I did. Do you need anything like this to make your Switch experience that much better? No. I mostly play in docked mode. I am perfectly content with my SN30 Pro and my Pro Controller. But if you like laying around with your Switch propped up on your chest, you might find some good options here. Just be careful of all that AliExpress gaff that has flooded Amazon recently. Most of it isn't worth saving the extra couple of bucks for. So what do you guys think about all of these big fat Joy-Con options? Is this something that you've been thinking about investing into? Usually when you get a new system, you want additional controllers. Something like the split pad or these things, it's hard to justify because this is only for one player. But something like the bin box, you can use for a, a second player eventually. Anyway, let me know what you think if you've ever used any of this stuff or if you've been interested in any of this stuff. Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. Of course, we got new videos here all the time at least once a week. We also got videos on youtube.com slash Wolfden Clips and youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Those are also at least weekly. We also got streams on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. I'm probably live there right now. I go live with, uh, the days I post these videos. Oh, and I forgot, Amazon links are in the description below for everything that I talked about here, and those links help support our channel. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, that helps us out. Thank you very much. Also, thank you, ExpressVPN for helping support this channel too. It is February, ad rates are low right now. But of course, the most important thing to help support this channel right here is just subscribe. Thank you very much. And turn on notifications only if you want to watch every new video. And share this video with a friend. A friend who is into these little knickknacks and doohickeys and maybe wants one for themselves. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week. I love you so much.